Okay, I think it's time to start. So, welcome back, everyone. The next session after the intermediate break is going to be by Lucy Schubert from uh, Wikimedia Czech Republic. And the topic is uh, how can Wikimedia education sector benefit from Erasmus Plus opportunities? Lucy, if you're ready, you can start. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, hello, everybody. Um... <laughs> Nice to meet you. I am the educational manager in the Czech uh, Wikimedia for two and a half years now, I would say. Um, okay, I got it. <laughs> um, but besides being involved in Wikimedia uh, for past, well, more than 20 years now, I've been involved in, uh, in what is now called Erasmus+. Plus. But I started in a youth work. So I was a youth worker, youth leader, and I was using the Youth in Action program originally. And then for more than 15 years, I've been somewhere in the system in a support structure as a trainer, facilitator, um, supervisor of the evaluations and so on. So the, the, the roles are changing through the time. But uh, this is just to understand a little bit of background why, why I'm bringing the topic in and why I'm thinking that it's kind of a pity that it haven't been in my uh, experience and knowledge I gained so far, uh, that it haven't been that much used within the Wikimedia uh, framework. Uh, started super sharp. Ah. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> um, it's plenty of you here, but I don't see your faces, which uh, after a year and a half in uh, COVID, it's uh, always a bit of a surprise. But uh, yeah, I, um, I understand if it's recorded that you maybe don't want to be seen. I still find it, thank you very much. <laughs> I still find it uh, quite uh, essential to have very brief, very brief, but uh, because this is my first trick I'm joining, the very brief introduction, if we can go super fast uh, round, if it's okay, um, who is here and uh, why you actually decided to, to join this, why you are interested in Erasmus Plus. And uh, if it's okay, I will go by window by window. Normally I would pass the, the word, but now just to be more efficient with the time, if it's okay, I will just go window by window. And the first one I've seen is Lars. So Lars, please. Hello, I'm <laughs> Lars from Sweden. Yes, I think uh, language is, an, uh, is, is one of my interests and, and uh, Erasmus might be a way to interact between across borders, across languages. Thanks. Uh, well, uh, the next one is Clara. But <laughs> uh, hi all. Uh, my name is Clara. I'm uh, Wikimedia Czech Republic uh, Executive Director, and uh, I'm the co-worker with Lucia. And uh, I will be here today just to support her because we uh, we worked on the Erasmus Plus uh, application together. But she's much. Uh, better in that than I am. So I'm very uh, happy that we can present you all. Thanks, uh, Philip Kopetsky. Uh, hi, um, my name is Philip Kopetsky. I'm from, originally from Austria and at Wikimi Austria, we've done Erasmus Plus programs with like train the trainers for um, Wikimedia Peace Camps. So um, I'm interested in like what other options there might be. Okay, Miroslav Lotzi. I'm sorry if I'm having a yes, wrong pronunciation. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I'm Miki, or Miroslav Lotzi, as you said, from Wikimedia Serbia. And uh, we are, are becoming a part of the Erasmus Plus uh, program with one educational institution. Of, um, um, well, we are part of it uh, right now. So I would like to hear more from everyone's experience of yours. Uh, so, uh, in order to be more prepared for the future that awaits us. Thank you, uh, Susanna. I cannot read the surname. Merkicia. I'm sorry, <laughs> Susanna. Are you here with us? Maybe not. Well, then, uh, Kirill. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. I'm yeah. Fast. So, okay. Susanna is now here. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, uh, our Wikipedians, 
um, participated in, uh, in Austria Erasmus Plus program. Also, we uh, have many educational programs, and uh, I want to see what we can uh, benefit for, uh, <laughs> for it from it. It's okay. So apparently I had a very wrong information. So there are experiences in the in the group. That's great. Kirill, yeah. <laughs> second chat. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Kirill. I'm from Macedonia. My country has been involved in the Erasmus Plus program from the very beginning, even though it's not uh, uh, an EU member state. Uh, we are a sanitary country. I know that uh, there are many universities uh, who have... Uh, uh, conducted uh, Erasmus Plus uh, projects and many students uh, went on uh, student exchange uh, through these uh, programs. I know that uh, they have a lot of money that remain unspent and this is a very good opportunity for all Wikimedia communities to get involved and uh, uh, right on the wave of uh, all benefits that the Erasmus Plus program offers. All right. <laughs> I don't hear it that often that they have so much money, but uh, somewhere it's this impression. Uh, Blaze, I'm sorry, I don't see your first name. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have experience with starting and co-managing uh, Erasmus Plus projects, the small ones uh, and small collaborations. And, but not related to Wikimedia field that I'm curious um, yeah, how this can work uh, because I have opposite of Kirill's experience that they are rigid with how you spend money. So even if there is something left, it's not easy to manage to, to uh, get to spend it. <laughs> like in a way you, you find most useful. Thanks. Um, Far Farhat? Farhat? Sorry, really, this is an exercise in reading the names wrongly. I'm very sorry. Farhat. Are you with us? Or maybe that's the recording. I'm not sure. No, uh, Far Farhat is, is translating. So, oh, okay, um, sorry. We're on a different channel. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, a different radio yeah. station. <laughs> Okay, um, Markelos? Okay, I will just go really fast because if, if the people are not here, then we can just go on. Leleko? Okay, Mati Krochal? That's why I will as well learn that maybe not uh, everybody is here at the moment. Okay. Uh, Jan Bart. But uh, we see you now. Uh, um, well, I was just asking uh, why you decided to join uh, the Erasmus Plus part, Jan Bart, and uh, uh, why you decided to join this particular track in the program um, and people were a bit reflecting if they have some experience already or if they have some questions. We don't hear you. So maybe the sound doesn't work, but uh, I am reading what you wrote. So you can as well, uh, <laughs> you can as well just post it. Thanks. Uh, anyway, nice to see you. Um, Ursula, Eric. Hi, the name is Ursula in Estonia, where I'm from, and uh, I'm interested in education in general. I don't have much experience with Erasmus, but I teach uh, in a university. That's why I joined it. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um... Then I think I'm coming almost uh, to the end. Is it An Antosh maybe? I don't know, sorry. Well, if there is still somebody- Anton. Antosh, <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, if you are with us, uh, you can have the floor now. Uh, 
Okay. Well, uh, then thanks everybody who, who joined a little bit. Um, I, I thought I would work with the with the Jamboard, but I didn't know how many will be are, and we are much more than uh, <laughs> than I expected. It's kind of hard to to estimate sometimes in this online world. So I will uh, I will still share it just that you see. I was trying to uh, sorry. Uh, wait a second. So, just um, that you all have it. This is the Jamboard I got ready. Um, well, as well, share it now. I was just trying to catch up a little bit what you were saying here, why why you came or what is your experience. Um, but I did it very, very fast because I was as well trying to listen to you and to ask more people to speak. So if you would like to correct it or if you would like to add, uh, please do it because this is something we can, uh, we can uh, save for later on. Uh, for me, this is super useful to, to ask later on what are actually the real experiences with the different Erasmus Plus uh, programs, because I think just just the fact that we meet here and we share like, OK, we have different diverse experiences, good, bad, maybe not connected to Wikimedia or connected to Wikimedia. But it's quite essential that this knowledge is somehow <laughs> shared within the movement and that not everybody who decides maybe to use the program in future have to, you know, dig <laughs> deeply where to find uh, if there is any experience. So, um, yeah, feel free to to add some stuff there. So the link is available. You should all be able to edit it. Um, I will stop the sharing now with this one. And so I will just, uh, because the time is flying, um, I will go straight to the next part, which is uh, sharing maybe a little bit uh, the framework and maybe to clear out some of the different uh, opinions on the Erasmus Plus or experiences. Um, so I, these are more points for me to <laughs> to actually um, just uh, to to give you the basic framework, and then I would be very happy if in the left time, then we can still discuss a little bit. But uh, what I think is essential is uh, to have a bit of understanding what uh, uh, like how the Erasmus Plus is formed and how it functions basically since 2014, years 2014. So it's a communitary uh, funding program of uh, the European Commission. It runs in all the member states and it some ways, and this is changing through the times, in some ways it supports as well the neighboring regions. And, and this always diverts a little bit and the neighboring regions are able to use some of the programs, but sometimes not all of them. Um, what is quite essential is that there is this program guide, which uh, it's used by the by all the program users, but as well by the national agencies. So that's kind of the binding <laughs> document which everybody relates to, but which is very extensive. If you would print it, it would be thick like that, and you might get really quickly lost in it. So as well, uh, there are maybe a few ideas how to <laughs> how to not get lost in it. Um, it's called Erasmus Plus, but it was not like that always. So there were different programs, and maybe you remember them. They used to be called like Socrates, Grundtvig, Leonardo, uh, Youth in Action, and Erasmus, which was always meant for the um, university education. What they did, because they want to promote the programs and to give them a label which is well known, they call them all Erasmus Plus now, which end up to be quite confusing for many people because then they think it only comes to university education, but it's not true. Like all the educational fields are under Erasmus+. So um, 
basically, if you do anything in education and you want to have an international cooperation and use the European funding, you should be able to find your way in it. Either you are a school or university, NGO, social enterprise, individual, like basically it's quite wide open, but that makes it sometimes as well so hard to understand it. Um, so uh, it works with the national agencies. Uh, they take care of the funding. So in all the European uh, Union countries, there is a national agency responsible for helping you as a program user to, to apply and it gives you the funding. And there are some special actions as well on the Brussels level. When it comes to neighboring countries who are not uh, member countries of the European Union, Sometimes they have some regional centers, sometimes they are called SALTO or other way around, but there is usually somehow a possibility to get support as well. Often, if you are a neighboring country, you need to have a partner within the European Union. And uh, from my practical experience, I think where most of us can find ourselves using the program is two sectors, and that's the youth, the youth in action, which is non-formal education area, and the adults education which is any kind of type of adults education, which comes to life long learning uh, framework, which happens out of universities, out of high school education, vocational and educational training, et cetera. So, so mainly if I talk about it, I look at this angle, like I think this is where you can actually as a Wikimedia uh, chapters or local initiatives where you can find yourself, where you can use it. If you work with the youth, then it's easy if you don't work with the youth, then uh, probably the adults education sector would be the one where you could apply for a certain project. Um, essential is that there is, it's an international cooperation and it's about education. There has to be some educational aspect in the project. It shouldn't be just traveling. It uh, has to have this like educational dimension for all the involved stakeholders in the project, I would say. Um, the current priorities for since the last year, because there is always like six years program period, it's inclusion and diversity, which if you look at our 2030 uh, strategy of the movement, I think inclusion and diversity is a big part of the topic. It's a digital transformation. I think we are all part of the digital transformation. Wikimedia projects are part of the open education resources and uh, generally transformation the knowledge to the uh, online world. So uh, I think we are meeting those two already. Environment and fight against the climate change. Uh, well, that depends. Like each of us has a different programs maybe, but uh, in general as well, this fact that some of the education and projects can happen through the online world and people don't have to commute and they don't have to come for it. Uh, physically, that as well is saving maybe some of the environment and allows to actually share the knowledge. And participation in democratic life, I believe that from the core values of the Wikimedia movement, again, like participation is a quite uh, high importance uh, value and, uh, and the way how we run activities, it's very participatory and, uh, and there is some certain democratic aspects and procedures. So I just wanted to show that these four main areas I think we actually quite meeting them if I take it from the very core. Um, sorry, I have to open the chat. Was there any guys as well? Um, oh yeah, this was Clara. No, I know the screen is not super awesome, but I, get, I had some issues with my computer just before this session. So I'm very sorry, but I will use it the way it is. <laughs> it's mainly for me to, to keep the, uh, the guidance. Um, I as well wanted to show you. Um, no, it's not here. Sorry, excuse me. So then uh, there are basically uh, some other areas which are quite important for the uh, for the Erasmus Plus. So these are the main er like topic areas, and then there are pillars as well. This all you can find later on on the website, but basically. Some of the areas is like multilingualism, um, open education resources. So all in ideal world, all the produced materials from the Erasmus projects should be somehow available. And uh, that as well makes it uh, quite useful 
for you as a, as a potential or current program users is that you can get inspiration and you can learn from the uh, from the others basically. So um, I'm sorry, uh, there is a picture which dropped out. I really had some issues with my computer just before the session, which didn't make it very nice uh, experience for me. That's so okay. um, um, what I suggest is that you, uh, that you, if you haven't had any experience with the Erasmus Plus is that you actually ask for help. So uh, there is a possibility to get a consultations with the national agencies. So you, there is a support there are sometimes in bigger countries there is a regional consultant. So, um, Sometimes people, you know, try to like deliver the project on their own and uh, it can get quite complex. So I think it's really good to reach out and to actually take the consultations. But the consultations you have to take on time, not like two weeks before deadline, then they are usually not managing to, to support you. Uh, the other option is to use different seminars and trainings uh, from for the program users. And there is quite plenty of them. So if you would be interested, I can then guide you as well where to find it. But uh, that's, um, for example, for the youth sector, this is really a useful thing because there are many young people who wants to apply and if they go for such a training or seminar, usually they are then able to write the application. And uh, then there are a few more resources such as Erasmus Plus Project Platform or IPALE, which are the sharing platforms. So if there were projects which were uh, realized and finished and uh, they have some results to be shared or, or descriptions how the projects were run, you can all find it there. So basically, if you are sometimes thinking like, okay, I have some idea, but I'm not sure if it's worth to apply or if anybody did something similar, then all these resources are there and you can just like go through it and see what, what kind of projects people are doing. Um, then when it comes to uh, structure, uh, I was talking about the youth and about the adults' education. Um, what is as well important uh, is that, except like the sector where you, where you go for the program, all the programs can go as well cross-sectoral. You can have different partners involved. So you could, for example, cooperate with university or with an NGO, another NGO, or even with a school is quite open it's just always where the most of the education delivered happens this is where you actually apply so in our example which i will talk about in a, in a few minutes uh we we figure out that it's basically mostly the adult education um and then the second uh kind of look at it it's whether whether you if they call it uh, actions like key actions key action one key action two key action three we can forget about the key action three it's not really relevant for us but if you look at uh, what what is possible for us as a, as a wikimedia chapters it's basically k1 and k2 k1 are any kind of mobilities so if you would like to do some job shadowing which is related to education or you would like to run a training or seminar um, somebody was sharing here that uh, you did some uh, like summer schools or camps or training for trainers. So this all comes into key action one. And they are actually shorter projects with smaller budget. And it's like kind of one activity to run or maybe multiple training, long term training course, but it's still just kind of a mobility. And it's either mobility of individuals or mobility of a whole group coming somewhere and doing some sort of educational exchange. And then there are the KA2 projects, which is strategic partnerships, and they come in two different levels, a small scale and a, and a large scale. The small scale has quite fixed budget and there are not so big uh, expectations on the, let's say, results of the project, the tangible results. So you don't have to deliver like a publication or methodologies or something. It's more like a exchange of of knowledge between different organizations and for the strategic partnerships with the large scale ones, um, there you actually have a, a budget dedicated to so-called intellectual outcomes. So anything what comes out of this cooperation and can be shared with the rest of the world outer space. Um, so this is just a little bit about the, the structure because sometimes people think it's just for the university students and sometimes people don't understand that there are like different options. And uh, 
it's a lot of more details I could go on with. <laughs> so I suggest I stop here with like the general introduction. And um, I would like to still share a little bit about our current experience. Uh, we applied for the uh, Adults Education uh, Key Action 2 Strategic Partnership, the large scale one with the uh, intellectual outputs budget for the uh, first deadline of this program period, which was uh, in May, April, May, <laughs> May. Um, and we were waiting for the results until pretty much last week where we learned that we actually didn't receive the funding, which is the sad story of this presentation. But uh, I still want to highlight why I found it so important, this experience, why, why I really value that we took it and, and what maybe what's gonna come next. Um, the whole thing rooted in our education affiliates call where we had the Wikimedia Argentina sharing with us the awesome project on Wikibridges, Wikipuentes, uh, the massive online learning courses and that time, me and our colleague Clara from the Polish uh, Wikimedia, we start to kind of think about it, that it's really nice and that in some ways that would make a lot of sense for us to implement in our uh, context in the in here in the Central Europe. And uh, since then we carry on and we were discussing a little bit and it all resulted into taking the action and forming a partnership of us, Wikimedia Poland, Wikimedia Slovakia, and a Wikimedia Sweden, uh, because basically we've been always as well, uh, Josefin, uh, our colleague from the Swedish Wikimedia, we've been always in touch and kind of discussing and sharing a little bit what are our ideas in the educational field. And we've had the feeling that we share the very basics. Clara, raise her hand. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, from the beginning we were thinking about like cooperation in C in C region. That was our like initial idea. Uh, so we ask uh, uh, we, we ask Austria, we ask uh, Poland and Slovakia, which is our like the closest neighbors. But as Austria wasn't like on the same page with uh, with the with the topic. Uh, we ask Sweden, but uh, the like the first uh, our idea was to really uh, start something in C region because it uh, kind of like feel important to us. Uh, so this is just like I, I wanted to uh, uh, just like tell this on the beginning. Okay, th thanks for the. <laughs> Uh, uh side note to this one or more explanation um for me it's a bit hard because I, I i sometimes forget what was first and what was later because we always have been uh, as well touched with the with the sweden uh swedish uh, branch um anyway so what what we did we put together the strategic partnership basically <laughs> within a roller coaster six weeks um and we managed to somehow uh, talk together, form the partnership. And I, again, would like to really value uh, the fact that all the partners get really involved in that and they were helping us a lot. Um, we as well decided to get an external support in terms of we are able to, to say what the content should be. We understand our Wikimedia world, but uh, to kind of frame it into the strategic partnership, it was quite essential that we had somebody who helped us to facilitate the whole uh, discussions and stuff. So this is as well, maybe a suggestion and invitation. If you think it's too much for you to write such application, I am quite against as, a, as, a, as Erasmus Plus promoter to have any of these external agencies who kind of do it for you, that I don't think it's the, the sense. But uh, I see a huge value to have somebody who has experience with writing such projects and uh, can guide you through the process and can kind of facilitate and say, okay, this, this is actually not fitting, this is fitting. And this is the discussions you as an as a, uh, international partnership should have. And, and this is maybe the learning as well that it's almost impossible to avoid quite an intense cooperation between the partners in the preparation period and as well through the uh, through running the project. And uh, especially when you go from the easy mobility projects into strategic partnerships, uh, 
the more time you spend in the preparation and framing kind of how you cooperate together, if you have a common understanding of the things, the easier and better it will be for you to deliver the project results. And it's no way kind of to go around. So I think it's as well good to be honest that there is a time investment and an investment in to be challenged in some of the discussions, because even when we talk about the same things, we often have a different point of view in, in reality. So uh, this is as well, I think quite a big beneficial part of running such educational projects on the, on the international level that you actually have to challenge your thinking a little bit and you can learn so much just from this cooperation. Um, so even we <laughs> resulted now in not having this project, uh, the idea behind was to a, get inspired by the wiki bridges in or so in that term one of the outcomes was supposed to be a massive online training course which would be in a, uh, in four languages for European languages plus English uh, which we thought maybe then could be later shared as well with other chapters if they like it because to translate something which is already up and running it's not that big uh, project anymore then we wanted to work bit more with the dashboard because there are still some uh, training parts uh, like an easy e-learning uh, part some uh, videos and basically educational outcomes which we could then share with the uh, with the wider public and partly inside the community which is already existing but majority of the stuff was supposed to be going outside. So anybody who wants to get oriented and cannot exactly come for a physical workshop with us can find some educational materials, guidance, massive online training course or e-learning, which they can go through to learn about Wikipedia, Wikimedia projects and to learn how to edit. Um, I, uh, I'm not able to follow the chat in the same time. <laughs> Uh, okay, is there anything I should take care of, or is it just a no? Okay, it's just fun. Um, yeah, we passed the limits. Uh, we had a feedback, and the the actual plan at the moment is to to correct the feedback and to try apply again. But we have to meet with our partners still. This this is really new information. Anyway, I will uh, stop here with me talking. And I would like to open the floor more for you because, I mean, we could go for four days long training course about Erasmus Plus and it still would not be kind of enough. So I tried to kind of took the essence of what I think it's important to say to frame the program a little bit and then to share a little bit how, how we did it now. But now I would like uh, more to share with, with you all if you have questions or if you see somewhere you could use the program please go ahead. Yes, there is a hand raised. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, we have a question by uh, Jelko. We have, we have a raised hand. Jelko. Maybe it would be useful uh, to talk a little bit briefly about who makes decision for what kind of projects, because I think this makes a huge difference. What are your chances? Uh, if it's a national agency, that makes the decision, it really depends if your local national competition is super competitive or not. And if it's international, if it's done in, in on European level, uh, then you can maybe have uh, less chances or better chances depending where you submit from and who are your partners, no? Um, <laughs> you, you always need to choose the agency, the national agency, and the, uh, this was like the thinking that we had as well, and uh, that's why we decided not, not to apply in Czech Republic, because the amount of money in Czech Republic is quite low, uh, and as well, like, there are, like, other, uh, because Lucy is uh, active in the Czech uh, agency, and she had training from, from Czech, so we wanted to apply uh, uh, others well, and it was Sweden at the end. We decided to use the Sweden agency and to apply there because we hope that our chances will be higher. But of course, you need to always like choose which uh, national agency you apply. If we were like for 
uh, we were for uh, parties for Wiki, Wikimedia, <laughs> Wikimedias. Uh, it was our uh, Slovakia, which is not the chapter. It's just like uh, the user group. So we didn't want to uh, like uh, give this like <laughs> the biggest part to uh, to them because we, they just don't have the stuff. And uh, it was Poland. So uh, we split the roles on uh, on the project in a like uh, specific way. And Swedish was Sweden was the one who applied at the end. I think still it was the good uh, good choice. And uh, yeah, so if you meant this, and maybe we'll say we'll, uh, we'll say we'll add something. Uh, I, I mean, <clears throat> it's a quite complex uh, thing. So either you try to elaborate really carefully on, <clears throat> okay, where to apply, where I have the chances and so on. Uh, <clears throat> but the truth is you can like uh, with the, with the evaluations, the system is the same everywhere. And uh, I can probably shortly answer this. Uh, there is always two evaluators, which are somehow selected. Uh, they evaluate the project according to a uh, quite strict uh, format and uh, they should agree. If, they, if there is a strong disagreement, then the third evaluator comes in and then the national agency works with the results. So there is always a letter. And, and this, this type of evaluation is done across the program everywhere. So there are not that big differences in those terms. What you can use as a program user for your own good is that you can actually download, it's public, the evaluator's guide, which very clearly says, all the objectives, all the evaluation criteria. And if you go line by line, you can actually really see if your project is your program, your project application is answering that or not. So in those terms, like you have uh, quite a high chance to, to do it correctly, but it's an educational program and it has its own framework and it's a donor as any other donor. So they have their own rules. And of course, if you have an idea which is very far from how they want to promote the program and what kind of activities they want to realize that, then uh, this, this becomes the challenge. Like um, it can be in some cases that you will basically not be able to fit within the Erasmus Plus program because the activities you run are simply of a different nature and that's totally okay. But uh, there has to be some adjustment sometimes done. That's, that's uh, I'm not sure I answered correctly, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Jacob. Thank, thank you, Lucy and Clara for uh, clarifying things. Um, I don't see any other raised hands. So maybe I uh, can make a small observation here with a couple of brief questions. Yeah, I suppose that uh, it's the same everywhere. We have a national agency, which is uh, a, government, a government control organization and uh, takes care about Erasmus Plus. So uh, I heard that it's a uh, the case in uh, the Czech Republic is the same in Macedonia. As uh, for the uh, process of submitting uh, applications, uh, is it necessary to uh, partner with educational institutions or at least other organizations that have uh, been involved in uh, uh, projects funded by Erasmus Plus? And uh, is it required to provide own contribution in the budget? Well, uh... In the current program period, they don't expect you to have your own uh, contribution with the money, as far as I know. Like it, it, it always depends a little bit between the K action one, K action two, but in general, not. But if there are currency differences, because you do currency exchange rates, you receive the grant in euros, etc., and through the time, if you have two years long project, things change, then all these goes to overheads. You cannot cover. Uh, it's like currency exchange, exchange rate differences, etc. So there are small amounts which will come to your side. Um, and then when it comes to mobilities, uh, the travel, uh, it's, it's a lump sum. So you have a distance calculator and people go for the mobility and, and they travel and they run over the budget given. Well, then they have to cover the rest, which is usually... Uh, if, if it comes to like mobility projects, people, their own contribution to the project is to contribution to travel costs. So they usually have to obtain their own insurance and to cover a part of the travel costs if they don't fit within the amount given by the 
general distance calculator, which everybody has to use. Um, so I would say this, this, this comes to the money contribution. Then yes, in many countries, the national agency is run by the Ministry of Education or other institution. And there sometimes the rules interferes a little bit, like the European Commission is quite loose in some of the ways, but then the national level might make it more strict or give more priorities or something like that. Um, but in general, the framework, the application forms and the, the system, how the evaluation is done should be quite the same everywhere. Yeah, and there, there was one more question. Uh, sorry, what was the third one? I took it from the back and was something. Yeah, to no, it's OK. Uh, you answered to all of them. So the one thing that comes to my mind is that uh, no, so, sorry, three... sorry, sorry, Kirill, you ask about the partnerships, like the partnership, who you should yeah. partner with. And again, it's, it's, they open it completely in, in this current program periods. There is not much limitation. If you go for the strategic partnerships, the big projects, you have to have, uh, you have, to have the legal entity, you have to have some budget uh, uh, running in the organization. So you have to kind of state that you are able to run such a project and that you are like formally existing. When it comes to mobility project and small scale stuff, it can be even a non-formal group applying for such projects. So even if four volunteers in Wikimedia, one of them 18 years old, decide to run together some small scale project, uh, there is Erasmus Plus, there is as well the European Solidarity Corps where you can do like local initiatives. It's very similar. It's just a program which used to be part of the Erasmus. Now it's next to it, but the national agency running together. There you can even be a non-formal group. And there, you just need one person send, like submitting their ID and their bank account. Or you can have a partner outside of the European Union. It's a possibility as well. Like, uh, for example, like the partner who has some special know-how or... Uh, so there are like like many options you can use. I think for like, from my experience, like the, the base of the project is, this is the most important. And as well as I can compare it with the other like European uh, applications that I am uh, like was uh, was aware of, uh, I was surprised about like the content of the budget. So maybe uh, start with this on the first hand, just to like um, uh, for me it was important, and for for all of the for for all of us it was the important issue. If it's just like worth it, if uh, the money covers the whole program and. Uh, as there is like the fixed kind of like fixed allocation to specific activities, uh, you can quite easily with someone who already knows or with just like the calculator compare if uh, this is something that get, that can cover the whole project. Thank you. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to think about uh, uh, making a joint application uh, between all the Wikimedia chapters from the C region. Or this is even something that uh, might be uh, feasible through the C hub, and then to uh, apply for a global initiative, like a global program uh, to Erasmus Plus. Well, yeah, <laughs> but then if I critically look how much effort we have to take uh, with the four partners, um, I would say it equally would rise with the with, with the bigger number of, of uh, countries or chapters involved in, uh, just to be critically aware of it. Um, second part is it rise the budget a lot. Any any organization you add in the partnership, it's gonna rise the budget. And then we know that, for example, in the adults education, there are some limits in the budget. Like the information we got now from Josephine from Sweden was that for the next uh, deadline, they cut the adults budget uh, halfway. So even if there are good quality projects, sometimes for some of the fields where we fit for certain deadlines, it's not enough budget. So even if you have a high scoring project, there will not be enough money left. So in those terms, I, I think it's a wonderful era, aid, idea. But I think what should come first before that is that there are more experiences on smaller scales, like smaller type of partnerships between two, three chapters, maybe organizing something together. And then when the general understanding and experience how these projects could be delivered is, is, is higher, then I can imagine we could have really awesome large scale project on the Brussels level. I don't think it's impossible. It's just to be aware that it's going to take 
quite some effort to put it together. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised like the feedback that we've got to have was uh, that the, like the reach of the project wasn't sufficient. Uh, I think that it's like we still need to because we know since like Tuesday uh, that we didn't like uh, got the grant even though like our points are sufficient but it wasn't enough to uh, to reach uh, to like the money. Uh, so we need to do like some like briefing after. But this was one of the feedback. So we need to find out what <laughs> if they if like the evaluators couldn't see like the reach of Wikimedia projects to, or if it's just like misunderstanding somewhere. But this was one part that was like uh, slightly surprising. But I think the truth is that it was really in such a run, uh, the writing the project. We had really like six weeks to set up the partnership, to write it all, to think about the logic of the uh, of the project. So I think we really would need more time than that. We would need, I think, three months to uh, to discussions between uh, the, uh, uh, all of uh, uh, all the partners. And there still like it was some missing logic at the end of the project. We we were aware of that. But we just tried because we uh, as well expected that we don't need to uh, uh, accept the or like uh, be the recipient re recipients on the first place. But we need the, this feedback from the evaluators to do like the second step probably and to apply again on uh, on sp on the spring. So uh, yeah, I think the learning is it's still a challenge for us to be understood by the outer world to be honest like i i really have a strong belief being part of the erasmus plus and being part of the wikimedia for long enough now i'd say that we really meet all the uh all the values and the priorities and we are living them like we are the open educational resource our uh our materials are free to use and like what the other organizations are somehow sometimes struggling with this is what we live. We really are part of the like modern approach to how education and information should be shared. And yet it was not well understood within the project and the application. And they found us to be a closed community with no outreach outside. And I think once again in my life, it's a, it's a, it's a very strong feedback on how to make ourselves understood because we are not here for ourselves, right? We are here to, to serve the world. If I talk in big worlds, but uh, th this is one of the challenges I still see there. Uh, yeah. Right, I think the time is up. The yeah. 45 so minutes we have already, yeah, we have already run out of time, so we have to finish the session here. Uh, thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Clara, for all the uh, input that you have made on uh, uh, the Erasmus Plus program and all the possibilities that uh, uh, we have and uh, we can exploit in order to uh, support our educational programs and all the activities that uh, might uh, fall within the scope of the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, 